hello everyone and welcome to the channel please pardon my voice it's not good today but yeah uh, because the exam is closed so i just thought of making this video for you so we have already discussed most repeated topics from inorganic chemistry in my past video and many of you showed interest so that i i should make for organic chemistry and physical chemistry both so here i am uh, was providing the most repeated topics from organic chemistry now again as i have said in the previous video this video or these uh, videos which I am making for inorganic chemistry, organic and I am going to make for physical chemistry as well. The sole idea is that you should not miss out these topics when you are revising the concept or when you are preparing for that uh, particular uh, like particular part that means organic, inorganic or physical whatever part you are preparing. You should make a note of that you have not missed these topics because these are important ones. Okay, So that is what it is. It does not mean that the exam only has these questions or the, the exam will contain questions from only these topics. That is that's of course not the motive of making these videos. This is just for the sake of reminding you that these are important topics and do not miss on them. Okay? Um, also like the thing is that you also have to focus upon other topics uh, apart from what I have mentioned but these are the important ones. And this will also help you to do in a way that let us say if you are preparing or only inorganic and physical chemistry and you are about to you know uh, ignore uh, organic chemistry completely or you are about to leave organic chemistry completely in that case probably this uh, these some of these topics you can include in your preparation then that can give you some extra questions in part B and part C of CSI net exam All right. So having said that let us start so we will start from the basic topic that is general organic chemistry so from GOC generally we get a question. See, there are various different types of questions in GOC, especially the stability of carbocation, stability of the intermediate. Most of the questions can be done based upon that. Okay, that concept is very important. But apart from that, there is a concept of acid and basic strength where pKa values are being asked. Uh, here, there are some small, small topics which you should make a note of, like donor acceptor ability, the nucleophilicity order electronegativity order inductive effect where you will be having more inductive effect and based upon that you will have different types of questions okay so this is just uh, uh, like this is the topic from where application part will be asked means you, the question will be solved based upon inductive effect okay then you have mesomeric effect electromeric effect hyperconjugation sir rule sip rule so you should be aware about these things okay then the concept of bond strength and bond dissociation energy uh, where you need to understand about hybridization how the change in hybridization makes uh, the difference in the uh, in the bond strength and questions related to that uh, how the s character defines the acidity of a particular organic molecule uh, how the stretching frequencies are dependent upon the hybridization the bond strength how bond strength basically uh, like plays a role in deciding the stretching frequency so higher bond order higher stretching frequency you should be aware about this okay so that means a uh, triple bond will always have a more frequency compared to a single bond. So yeah, these are the things which you should make a note of. Aromaticity is one of the topic which has been very frequently asked and it is something which is asked every time. It's very basic, okay? It's not at all difficult. You need to understand about how to find out a molecule which is aromatic, homoaromaticity, non-aromatic, anti-aromatic. So most of them are done on the basis of Huckel rule, but yeah, you should be able to understand that how to differentiate between them. I have made a video on that. I will give you link for that in the description. Check out that video and like try to you know uh, learn from there. That's just a short video in which I have explained everything about aromaticity. Then there is a concept of anisotropic effect where it uh, how does it affect the chemical shift values? This basically is aromaticity concept, but it is used in uh, organic spectroscopy. That means when you study NMR spectroscopy over there, you study anisotropic effect. Then uh, dipole moment and how does the aromaticity plays important role in the bond rotation barrier and concepts related to that. So these are certain things which you have to co like cover from aromaticity. Stereochemistry is again a very important topic and most of the organic chemistry especially high uh, higher education organic chemistry uh, it has to do everything with stereochemistry like whatever you study stereo is the thing where uh, the most of the questions are asked and where you have to be very focused upon. Uh, you should uh, like when you are preparing for such questions or when you are preparing for stereochemistry related things it is not only going to be direct question but uh, in the in the long form or where you will be having questions like uh, reagent based or reaction mechanism based you should know how to find out the stereochemistry of the product so there also this is going to help so confirmations uh, based upon confirmation you have different stability stable confirmation of the cyclohexane like chair form board form twist board form half chair form which one is more stable why is it more stable then different uh, you know 
uh, substituted uh, cyclohexane where you will be having a bulky group on the axial position or in the equatorial position how does which is going to be more stable confirmation of a substituted uh, dihalocyclohexane or uh, di conjugated or tri conjugated cyclohexane then you should be able to uh, form uh, from the cis trans uh, you know configuration of a, a cyclohexane to the chair form of the cyclohexane so where the group is going to go like trans are going to go on uh, axial and equatorial or equatorial axial so all those questions related to that again i have made a video on that you can watch that i will give you in the description that link for that video all right then the question based upon human projection where eclipsed gauche and staggered uh, confirmations are there you will of course have very challenging questions where there will be a concept of intramolecular hydrogen bonding that can increase the stability so whenever a question is asked based upon the newman projection and you have different confirmation eclipsed gauche and uh, staggered you should be very careful while choosing because there could be a concept of intramolecular hydrogen bonding and that can make even your eclipsed confirmation more stable than the staggered one so yeah you have to be careful about that okay in past we have questions uh, something related to that then you have concept of enantiomeric excess where you have to calculate the percentage of r and s enantiomers that you have to be clear about rs dl configuration for aline system biphenyl system nsa compound cyclo uh, cyclophanes helical compounds so you should be able to find out the r and s nomenclature of them then stereoisomers where you have to find out the enantiomers the identical molecules and diastereomers like how uh, it will be asked that which of the following pair are enantiomers or how many enantiomers are there so such questions are asked and these are generally asked at two markers so you should be clear with them because these two marker questions are easy to do and at the same time they are challenging to do there are chances of doing mistake over there so yeah you have to be clear with this concept then the concept of topicity i have made a, con a video on this very clear video you can watch that and all your uh, like doubts of homotopic heterotopic protons that will be clear after watching that video so do watch that video again i will give you link for that video in the description of this video then we have name reaction now of course there are like th hundreds of name reactions if you study whole organic chemistry but i have just mentioned few of them which has been very uh, frequently asked like beckman rearrangement is something which has been asked very frequently then Feversky rearrangement aldol reaction birch reduction the questions related to birch reduction that which of the following like the reaction will be given and you have to identify that the burst reduction is actually being done over there then you have uh, mitsonubu reaction then you have olefination where peterson reaction is there julia reaction core winter reaction so how to differentiate between them although this question based upon them has been asked two or three times in the past but yeah you should be aware about how to differentiate between them okay then coupling reaction this is something which you might have studied in uh, organometallic compounds as well because they are done in the presence of organometallic catalyst which catalyst is responsible for what coupling reaction and what will be the product that thing should be clear to you so this generally comes under your name reaction only so still coupling hayama hiyama coupling tonogashira coupling suzuki coupling negeshi coupling kumada coupling heck coupling i think these are the only major coupling reactions which are there in your course there are few others but these are the ones which has been asked very frequently let's go to the next thing which is reagent again reagent again is a very big topic it has a lot of concept it has a lot of things to discuss i have just included few of them which has been asked very repetitively so that means that you have to study whole reagent but these are certain topics which you should not miss out okay which reagent should you should be clear about and you should be able to do questions from these reagent and you should be you know uh, like you should be well aware about how to do questions from this topic like Gilman reagent, Grignard reagent, Grignard reagent has been asked multiple times and this is something which is very favorite from the CSR point of view. Then hydroboration reaction, decarboxylation reaction, different reagents involved in that. Then I have just written the reaction, okay, different reagents involved in that and in which case what type of product will be formed that you have to understand, okay. Then your idolactonization, then ozonolysis, there are various questions based upon ozonolysis and i think that it, this is the one of again topic which has been asked multiple times then epoxidation where you have to study about these all these reagents like mcpba sharpless asymmetric then um, in the presence of all these reagents so you should know how to do epoxidation in the presence of all these different reagents okay how the epoxidation differs how the product differs when the reagent is changed then in the presence of butyl lithium with or without TMEDA how the product formation differs 
okay so you should be aware about such questions then comes the most favorite topic of mine okay from the organic chemistry which is organic spectroscopy now again this is one of the high weightage topic see again reagent and name reaction are very big topic they of course have high weightage in the exam but they are very huge topic very big topic lot of things to be covered in them and that's why i always say that there is a weightage to a uh, topic ratio which is quite okay for reagent and reaction mechanism but this only those people who are good at organic chemistry or who are interested in organic chemistry they can only study them someone who is not good at organic chemistry or who, who does not like to study organic chemistry in that case probably they might skip those re, uh, chapters but then also i have just included few names so at least you should you should do these these topics okay don't leave this this topic entirely so from inorganic sorry from organic spectroscopy you of course are going to get a structure determination from the ir data nmr data sometimes they also give you uh, like uh, in uh, like carbon nmr and proton nmr both or sometimes they only give you proton nmr ir is given to uh, let you know about the functional group then the order of ir stretching frequencies so how the ir stretching frequency is going to differ based upon different factors uh, based upon the bond order based upon how uh, like acidic or how much uh, electron density is there on the metal where it, uh, whether there is a pi back bonding or not so based upon that how the ir stretching is changing structure determination from the mass spectrometry is also being asked so here certain concepts are very important like alpha fission you should be aware about it question has been asked very tricky question has been asked based upon this and wherever the question is asked on mass spectrometry there is high chance that that question will be from maclefort rearrangement so you should be aware about how to apply maclefort rearrangement and you should always check uh, that whether a maclefort rearrangement is happening or not if a question is entirely on mass spectrometry okay uh, and uh, there are 80 to 90% chance that the question will be from maclefort rearrangement then the intensity ratio of m m plus 2 and m plus 4 peak this is for your halogen compound okay so halogen containing compounds so here whether your compound has a chloride bromide or what so if you have one chloride in the molecule the m and m plus 2 peak will be in the ratio of 3 is to 1 if you have one bromide in the molecule then the peak ratio will be 1 is to 1 if you have two chloride in the molecule then your m m plus 2 and m plus 4 peak will be in the ratio of 9 is to 6 is to 1 if you have two bromide in the molecule your intensity ratio of m m plus 2 and m plus 4 peak is going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1 so you should know about this and you should be able to solve such questions uh, this is based upon the abundance relative abundance and not only upon chlorine containing compound but sometimes they have asked uh, for other molecules also like i remember once a question was asked where iridium chloride compound was given and uh, relative in abundance was given and based upon that you have to calculate actually the intensity of the final peak and the question or the options were up to three decimal three or four decimal places so it was very challenging and very important so they were just trying to know that whether you have just mugged up the concept or you actually know how to calculate it from the relative abundance so this is something which is from organic spectroscopy and from physical spectroscopy both but yeah, i would say that it's more from the calculative part of organic chemistry then the number of signals in carbon and proton nmr this is some certain question which you can expect in a two marker so yeah two marker for a favorite question is this that a molecule will be given and they will ask you how many carbon nmr signals or proton nmr signals will be there you have to basically find out identical positions or you have to find out whether there is plane of symmetry or not how many of them will be similar how many of them are in different chemical environment so based upon that you can do such questions all right moving ahead to the last slide so we have next topic which is pericyclic reaction again a very important and easy topic if you understand this it's very easy okay so in pericyclic reaction favorite reaction is or favorite topic is in reaction where questions are asked multiple number of times and sigma tropic reactions are there cope rearrangement Claisen rearrangement deal solder reaction different conditions for that whether a particular molecule is going to go in deal solder reaction whether there is a uh, cis confirmation for s cis confirmation possible for that or not whether it will twist and undergo deal solder or not okay so certain types of questions are there then stereochemistry and regioselectivity based deal solder reaction then exo and endo products formed accord when the deal solder reactions happen and then diene reactivity the order of diene reactivity which diene will react more than the other based upon that deal solder reaction like these are certain types of questions from deal solder reaction which are asked so again next is photochemical reaction and here you have to study norish type 1 and type 2 these this is something uh, 
uh, which has been asked multiple number of times Norris type 1 and type 2 one thing which I missed out over here is Barton reaction so yeah Barton reaction is also asked multiple number of times like where you have gamma hydrogen uh, like uh, the removal of the gamma like the cleavage of the gamma hydrogen bond so that yeah, basically uh, gamma or omega hydrogen bond basically happens so that's in your Barton reaction just check it out once but yeah these two things Norris type 1 type 2 and Barton reaction are important from your photochemical reactions next comes your natural products so in natural products there are various different things you just have to just like you have bio inorganic chemistry in, in your inorganic uh, chemistry topic so over there you have a huge syllabus you have to remember a lot of things in the same way you have to remember few things from the natural product as well like uh, different hormones in which you have to study about insulin different proteins generally questions are asked upon keratin then alkaloids where you have to study about morphine nicotine caffeine atropine cocaine and ephedrine okay these are some of them which has been asked multiple number of times terpenes including camphor squalene and beta amyrin so you should be aware at least if you have if you are leaving this natural product topic if you are someone who has decided that I'll i'm not going to study natural product for the exam at least try to cover these topic before exam so that you have something in your hand before you go for the exam so that's it for this video i tried to include some of the topics which has been repeatedly asked in organic chemistry organic chemistry is a huge topic it's a vast syllabus but still i just try to compile the things in a way so that uh, i include only important parts only those things which has been asked multiple number of times do let me know what you guys think about it if you think that i missed out certain topic or if you think there is a concept which i missed or uh, there is a topic which i missed which has been asked multiple number of time do let me know in the comment section i'll try to pin your comment up and yeah uh, stay tuned and subscribe the channel because i'm going to make video for physical chemistry as well and all the best for your preparation keep preparing for your exam days are very less so don't miss out these topics and that's all from my side. Take care. Bye-bye.